everyone to the Ideas Exchange podcast presented by InExpress. I am your host, Paul Castleberry, and this is the podcast where we talk about entrepreneurship, business, franchising, franchisors, tech, all the fun stuff, everything in between all of that. And today I am excited to have Derek Henderson with us today. And I've got I've got an awesome bio I'm going to read about Derek real quick. Real quick. He's going to have to suffer through this for a minute. Derek Henderson is a franchise owner with Inexpress, a third-party business to business provider in the logistics space that partners with companies like UPS and DHL. Derek ditched his career in corporate America so that he could forge a path to financial freedom for him and his family, which he ultimately found in the Inexpress model. 12 years later, he operates a $2 million franchise from his home office, helping small to mid-sized businesses nationwide connect with a better service and better pricing. And the one thing I think he left out of this bio, which we're going to talk about towards the end, is he is a six-string samurai on the guitar. Derek, welcome. Thank you for being on the podcast with us today. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for having me. It's outstanding to be here. How's the weather in your neck of the woods these days? You know, it's getting, uh, I'm in the Seattle area, so um, we're known for our rain, but man, when I look out right now, it's uh, it's beautiful and sunny, so I'm super excited. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you again for so much being here. I, I particularly wanted Derek to come on this podcast because I saw a video he produced, gosh, it's probably been a while back now, and you can probably correct us on that, Derek, where you were, you were talking a little bit on e-commerce and shipping options and things like, do you recall that video? You want to touch on that real quick? Yeah, realistically, uh, that video I had done as a um, as a really as a uh, it was as a sales video. I took one of our one of my prospects and I went to their website and I basically analyzed the my experience and told them how I could help them improve their customers' experience uh, by adding you know uh, you know by adding our service. Um, and so that's kind of what with the backdrop for that particular video was. Um, where I, you know, and I, and I just, I noticed that he didn't have, you know, certain services that he should have, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of where that came from. Yeah, it was a great, great video. I thought it was so awesome. And I come from an e-commerce background. And when I saw that, it just kind of really resonated with me. And that's kind of what I wanted to touch on today is just, you know, e-commerce in general, it's, it's a thing. I, I know you can probably recall, uh, back in the day when e-commerce was getting up and going and oh, yeah. we all thought like, buying things online what what is that all about what, is that a thing so uh where do you think it's going in in the future where is it at where is it going yeah well it's man it's uh it's really interesting because obviously we've seen massive shifts in the entire industry over even over these last probably i mean just think about the pandemic that we're coming yeah. out of now and and what we've seen over the last 2 years really um and and obviously it was really big before that as well so um, where is it going? Um, I think you'll con continue to see, um, you know, companies having an online presence, but um, but it's all about really efficiency. It's about trying to scale, uh, and so people are utilizing platforms like their Amazon's, like their Etsy, their eBay, um, to build platforms that they can and multiple multiple platforms uh, so that they can uh, host their products, their services, etc. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. You know, it's I think as a as we move forward and keep going into the future, we're going to see more and more digitization of this. Oh, right? yeah. I think more people, like you said, they're going to find the platforms out there. They're going to jump on board to get their goods out into the space to build their businesses and all that kind of stuff. I interesting point that you had brought up that I thought we could touch on is the consolidation of providers creating a larger access point for competitive pricing. You, you want to touch on that and kind of expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. It's a big deal right now, especially for, because you've got so many, I mean, think about this. You've got millions probably of e-commerce shops online that are yeah. selling their products, right? Um, and so each one of these has, they all have something in common. They need shipping rates. Yeah. Okay. And so every single one of them, no matter who they are, they've got to have them. And so, uh, and of course, that's one of the main places that you're going to, either have or not have a competitive advantage in that, you know, in that online marketplace, if you're, you might have the same product as somebody else, but if you don't have competitive shipping rates, you're, you're dust. You don't have, yeah. you don't have what it takes to, to be able to compete in the, in the landscape. And so mm -hmm. what we're finding is that, you know, you've got companies like, 
uh, for example, a stamps.com, which is the niche, the nation's largest provider of, uh, of postal rates. And then they've purchased, uh, you know, the, one of the nation's leading e-commerce fulfillment platforms, uh, ShipStation. Now ShipStation then goes and does a deal with FedEx, UPS, DHL, um, and some others to be able to provide uh, a competitive rate to their entire millions worth of uh, a customer base, creating that access point, that digital access platform, what they call in the in the uh, in the industry, which allows for them to, um, you know, for the carrier, it makes a lot of sense because they get access to a lot of shipping volume very yeah. quickly with very little, um, you know, to do for it, so to speak. Um, yeah. And so that's what that's what that's all about is is the carriers looking for an easy win. Um, the the fulfillment providers uh, providers or the e commerce those platforms it's the digital platforms also looking for an easy win an entirely new revenue stream you know rather than just the subscription uh, charge for their for their platform itself they yeah. make millions of dollars on this uh, on this stuff so uh, a huge huge trend in the industry right now if I were a small business owner and I heard what you just said I'd be scared to death. I would hear that. I'd be frightened. I'd be like, how, how in the world am I going to be able to compete with that? So I guess that's kind of a good question to throw out there is yeah. as a small business owner, who's just struggling to make it right. Especially mm -hmm. in today's landscape, how are they going to break through that? How are they going to compete with, with those big boys? Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of, uh, and, and just to be clear, a lot of those small businesses, they're able, they're actually able to get better rates than they would normally be able to negotiate on their own by utilizing those digital platforms. So there is something, there's a win there for the e-commerce uh, store, uh, definitely. Yeah. Um, having said that, uh, it's a really interesting catch because, uh, like I said, it's a quick win for the carrier. It's a quick win for the uh, the the platform, right? And yeah. it's a quick win also for the e-commerce store or the business, the small business. Um, having said that, the there's there's it's very um, unidimensional the service, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning it's only got one thing to offer, and that is an uh, you know uh, uh, competitive discounted rate uh, for shipping outbound, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's got one thing to offer, and it does it really well. Uh, the problem is that if you need anything else, all of a sudden uh, it breaks down very quickly and you need mm -hmm. a provider who can actually step in to either one consult you uh, because these guys don't answer any questions. They don't provide yeah. customer service. You're, they you're just a, you're a number to them. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and as long as you're shipping, you're a great number. But uh, right. the truth is, you know, I mean, it, when you look at, you know, some platforms out there, they charge you uh, extra money to be able to call in to get customer service. And so um, <laughs> it's it's amazing, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, wow. But, um, you know, that's where uh, somebody like in, in, in Express, um, you know, is going to come in and, and be able to just to be that level of service and give the business owner uh, a sense of um, confidence and a sense of being able to consult someone and truly look after their business uh, from a win-win standpoint. And it, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, with the with the competitive rates that N Express can offer, you've got not only the ability to compete, but then also what we talked about earlier on when you said in the bio, thanks for reading that, <laughs> uh, about uh, just offering that better service. It's, yeah. uh, it's really peace of mind for the, the business owner uh, to be able to pick up the phone and call someone right away immediately or text or email and to mm -hmm. have that access. That's huge. I, I know I've had problems with uh, shipping carriers in the past where pick up the phone, you're the 1-800 number. It's just like, you know, five different things. You press five for this, two for that, three for that. So that single point of contact, that's that's pretty powerful. I want to come back to that. Uh, one thing you had touched on in that video, if I can recall, yeah. was the number of shipping options that these small to medium-sized businesses have on these kind of platforms like yeah. uh, ship, station, ship Station or whatever. I'm curious, I, as a consumer, I like to see options, but yep. how many is too many? How many is, is not enough? What would yeah. you take there? Well, uh, on that video that you referenced, um, I recall on that video that, um, that the, the, my prospect only had one option. Right. And it was uh, and it was a USPS option, which is a great option for, you know, you want to have uh, an option like that. It's very, very inexpensive, but also prone to loss, prone to potentially damage. Yeah. Um, you know, not as reliable, but it is very, very uh, inexpensive for those who are uh, very economically minded. Yeah. Um, having said that, 
um, you know, the second you have a customer or a, a client online, a user who is looking for something that's, hey, you know what? It's my dad's birthday and I need to get him something right away. Yeah. Uh, you, all of a sudden, like you just you can't get that person's business because you don't have yeah. you don't have the options. Um, or uh, an international customer who is like, you know what? I know the postal office is, you know, highly unreliable. It takes several weeks. Uh, I just don't have that kind of time. So when it comes to uh, options, that particular guy didn't have very many options. And so <laughs> that's where we were coming in to, to consult. So he could keep that option. Um, we were advising him to add both a standard and an, and an express option. Yeah. And so having those three options, having the one that costs more, but you're going to get it, uh, with full tracking and pretty reliably and very quickly, uh, but you're going to pay for it, yeah. right? Having that middle ground that uh, that's still trackable, but um, is it's not going to break the bank. It's probably one of the best, uh, you know, value for service uh, yeah. that you'll find. But then also having that economy option, uh, which is pretty cheap, um, you know, maybe the less the least reliable of the of the options. But yeah, uh, we find that having three options, it's going to touch. You know, it's going to give you the best option of of gaining the business for your for your product on that site. Small, medium, large, right? That's it. That's it. You good, know, good, better, best kind of a thing, huh? That's right. That's, That's right. awesome, man. Uh, that answered the next question is how many shipping options, and, and you said it three, right? That's is that kind of a go to three? Because I know sometimes I, I recall maybe shopping on Amazon, for instance. Mm -hmm. I've only seen two at most, right? Either the snail mail type of a way or just the prime two day. So yeah. Yeah. It's, is three, the magic number you think? Well, I, I think it's close. I think it's close. It, it kind of depends on, you know, it, it can depend on your, your product or your service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is it a time sensitive product? Is it, uh, is it perishable? Right. Um, mm -hmm. There are other questions that, that would, that would potentially uh, you would need to, you know, uh, think about, but um, having said that it's a great option to have three. Uh, if you can, if you can have that, express option that kind of a standard option um and then and then the, the economy amazon's obviously done something really special with the whole prime two day yeah um, kind of hits that spot right uh yeah. that's pretty cool um most people can wait two days for it um you know and those who can't uh, for the most part will would do like a something quicker but um yeah i think i think three is is good um when i what i do what i do notice uh, for our clients is that um, what we'll advise them is when we see like, uh, and I do, I see five, six, seven, eight options on there, you know, and as a consumer, you know, you got to think about, uh, you know, it's got to be easy to get and it's got to be easy to understand. Um, yeah. You know, and if I see multiple options for express, multiple options for a standard, um, I, I understand where they're coming from. They want to give the customer options. The mm -hmm. problem is that it's like going to a restaurant where you've got this menu that's like, it's got like, uh, you know, five, six, seven pages, right? So like, it's oh like the cheesecake God. factory, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So too many options can be too much. It can yeah. be overwhelming and, you know, the customer may not know what to choose. And it, it, and ultimately they may make a decision, but it also affects, um, it affects their perception of the experience, the overall user experience. Yeah. 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 Definitely something to consider for sure. I, uh, w when we were preparing for this, I found an interesting article. I think I sent this over to you. It's on the, uh, I'm sure I'm going to butcher it, the SEM Rush blog. Maybe they call it something else, but I'm, I'll go with that. But I, I found it to be a pretty interesting read. And it's all about e commerce trends in 2022. You know, yeah. they talk about things like sustainability and upcycling, you know, things of that mm -hmm. nature. But the, but the section that stood out to me, that, right there. That could be a topic in and of itself, right? So I love crypto. Uh, the delivery revolution will continue. I, yeah. I found this part of it pretty interesting. And just to read a little bit of it, it says home delivery service is rapidly evolving. Since the start of the pandemic, companies have risen to the occasion to meet consumer demands for fast and convenient doorstep delivery, but offers are still, uh, but efforts still aren't meeting consumer desires. And then it just yeah. goes on to kind of spell out that, that personal touch. Uh, any thoughts there? You want to expand on that maybe? Yeah. You know, the, the residential piece, what it's talking about right there, that's, it's a, it's a real, um, it's a problem for a lot of carriers that has always been the most expensive uh, place for the carriers to deliver. And so they've always, they've had the charges, you know, the upcharges, the residential fees, um, you know, uh, you know, so 
essentially, you know, them, this particular niche in the industry, you know, and on that article too, I actually saw that article. Um, you'll notice that um, Ulta, for example, the beauty company, you yeah. know, they just partnered with DoorDash, right? Yeah. yeah. Same day delivery, right? They're, Amazon started this thing where, uh, you know, it's, it's got to, it's got to, you know, we've got to be more yep. competitive. So it's not just two day delivery. It's got to be same day delivery now. So, you know, you've got these companies that are trying to to push the edge of, of, uh, of providing that awesome service that, you know, that, uh, very fast, you know, um, gratification, if you will, uh, for getting their products right away. But, um, but the key is to be able to do it sustainably, um, you know, and, and economically, right. Because, you know, going out to, you know, residential neighborhoods, you know, you may not be able to exactly find the area right away. It may be hard to find, uh, all this kind of stuff. So other variables that, that would affect cost and, and the ability to do that well. So I think we'll continue to see uh, a real shift to that, uh, to that particular, um, uh, niche in the industry. Is it, is it safe to say that Amazon probably spoiled all of us with the whole <laughs> two day thing? And, and oh maybe I wouldn't say ruin the industry, but definitely spoiled us to say like, Oh, we got to get it in two days or less. Right. So yeah, that's right. That's right. I think everybody would agree that there's uh that there's now a standard, right? There's a, there's a line uh, that's been drawn yeah. and, and you're either above or below that line. So yeah. Yeah. If I don't get it in two days, I, I'm mad. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, further on in that article, it talks about uh, the welcome to the D2C direct sales, a millennial love affair. I thought that part was pretty funny, but it's that direct to consumer part of it, right? I mm -hmm. think the idea of brick and mortar stores, it's fallen by the wayside. And um, this is the more common thing. Again, I, I remember, you know, you and I had been talking about uh, when e-commerce was starting to come up, right? And we thought it was just this bizarre idea you know think of our grandparents nowadays if they yeah. were still alive they'd be like what i can order and have it delivered to me but that's that's the way we're going and i think everybody needs to adopt this model and get on get on board with it you, you have any thoughts there um you know i mean realistically i just think about myself as a consumer right uh you mm -hmm. know here i am you know i can be in bed and 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 thinking about oh my gosh i need this thing you know to to get something done for a project this weekend boom you know, uh, here I am on my phone buying it on Amazon two days later. Right. So, or whatever, but, but yeah, this, the entire, uh, the entire industry continues to move very quickly toward, toward this, uh, you know, direct to consumer. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's absolutely going to continue to push that way. Very safe to say that businesses should take a look at this, know it's a thing, stay on yeah. top of the trends and, and adapt. Right. Yeah. That's absolutely right. That's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Well, Derek, I this has been an awesome conversation, man. We're we're coming up on our time here together. I, I appreciate you jumping on, sharing your thoughts with us. I'm gonna throw it to you. Any last closing thoughts, remarks you want to throw out there on, on what we're talking about here? Or yeah, it's up you to know, you. Had, yeah, I had a um uh, just a thought going back to what we were talking about earlier as well, just in terms of options on your um on your website, you know we talk to a lot of customer and a lot of, uh, you know, prospective e-commerce e companies out there in the industry. And, um, those companies that don't have the options for their customer, um, you know, that says something about how you, uh, value, you know, your customer, your customer's yeah. experience. Right. So if you're not going to offer, uh, if you're only going to offer one option or whatever, um, just know that that communicates something about uh, about how you feel about you know your customer and and how you want their experience to be. So, um, you know, my encouragement on that to to businesses is is to think about what you're providing you know in terms of options and and specifically with regards to shipping uh, to your e-commerce you know clients. But um, yeah, I, I have had that thought. But man, this is an exciting time to be in for sure. You know, yeah. love this industry. It's super, super dynamic. Uh, lots of lots of change. Super exciting, um, and lots of opportunity for for all a lot of players involved too. So I'm happy to be here, and um, you know, I look forward to helping customers out there in the industry. Very well said. I appreciate it, sir. Six string samurai. Closing thought here. Closing question. Best guitar player ever to have lived. Ever to have lived. It's besides easy. besides Derek Henderson. No, no, no. That's not, I'm not even in the conversation. No. <laughs> The answer is there can only be one answer, and it's Richie oh. Sambora from Bon Jovi. Ooh, good one. Good one. I respect yeah. it. Well, Derek, thank you so <laughs> very much. I appreciate your time. Keep doing what you're doing, and we'll talk to you later. Take care, buddy. Thanks, Paul.
Thank you so much for listening to the Ideas Exchange podcast presented by InExpress. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to show us some love and support, please share it out with others on social media or leave us a rating and review. If you want to know more about what InExpress is, visit InExpress.com to find out what they do and how they can help you and your business. That's I-N-X-P-R-E-S-S dot com. Thank you so much, and we will catch you in the next episode.